Bully Richie Day. Let's get back to right. Bully Richie. I love Bully Richie. So We're looking at a backwards camera that says, Don't <laughs> trade Jacob Chikrin, change my mind. All right. So uh, I hope I said on this podcast, I think I did, but I also know I, I talked about it on AZ Sports Guy. My view on this was if you can repair the relationship and get Chikrin on board with the rebuild and talk him into it, great, keep him. Then I would completely agree there's no reason to trade him. Yeah. But given the kind of competitor he is, given the interview he, he did with Craig Morgan at the end of last season, and we talked about it on, on the podcast, I'm like, all I'm hearing is I want out. All I'm hearing is a trade is, is happening, or the, he wants a trade, he wants out of Arizona. And not because he hates the market, he hasn't trash-talked the market, hasn't trash-talked the fans, he's just talking about the situation. Because realistically speaking, when he signed that contract under John Chica. They were supposed to be coming out of a rebuild. They're supposed to be a playoff contender and building on this roster. You saw that, you know, acquiring Kessel, acquiring Hall. But then when all that just fell through, you know, he, he didn't see that coming. So now we're going through another rebuild. It makes perfect sense. Get what you can for him. Move on from him. I got no hard feelings against him. And I, I think his comments were honestly as, as probably as respectful and honest as it gets because he's like, you know, they approached me. And, uh, I, I, you know, after a conversation with my family, I've decided I'm going to take him up on the offer because I approached him twice. Two more reasons to trade Jacob Chickard, by the way, Richie. And, yes. And, uh, honestly, I just, I really wish he would have got that trade at the deadline because I feel like his value would have been, been higher. Because at this point, now that we've had two full summers of him being on the market, quote-unquote, two full seasons, two years, we also have him publicly saying, yeah, the Coyotes are interested in trading me, meaning I am on the block, now he's publicly said he does want out of Arizona. That mm -hmm. takes a hit to the value, regardless. If it was yeah. two first before, now it's a first and a second. And it does kind of suck, but at the same time, nobody was budging on that original asking price. And technically, he's not even cleared to shoot pucks yet, at per Craig Morgan. So that could also be a reason why, because he got injured again and wasn't cleared yet, so you don't want to acquire someone while they're injured. Could be completely the case. As soon as he's cleared... He could move for three firsts and Connor McDavid, for all I know. That's not happening. But he, he could move for a high price, yeah. and it, I wouldn't be surprised. But just saying, even though that, that could be a factor, I think just the, the value has gone down regardless. So expect like a good prospect, a first, a second, and probably a cap dump for an additional asset. Do you think that he gets booed on opening night? I hope not. I, if he's still on the he team? He might. It's 50-50 because we're seeing it with Jay Crowder right now. Uh, he made that tweet where he's like, oh, you know, 99 is not going to be at training camp. This is the Phoenix Suns, by the way. And you're seeing a handful of uh, – not a handful, a lot of Suns fans, like, trashing him. And the thing is, like, what the, the tweet was cringe. Like, I, I don't mind, like, you know, you know, clowning on him a little bit for it. But, like, the actual the, – the couple of years he's been here has been a good player. So it's like, you know, hey, if you want to move on, that's fine. Get a trade partner and move on. It's best for both – Teams, Cam Johnson's coming up anyway. So with Chikrin, at least he's being honest. At least he's been working with the organization. He didn't throw a fit and demand the trade. They came to him. They said, hey, yep. we just know, we know what kind of person you are. Like, do you want to? Meaning, he probably, even if he would not have re-signed, even if he would have just played out his contract and kept his head down, he might have just came to work, did his job, and still been a professional about it. And that is something I, I have to respect. So I, I hope he doesn't get booed. But so, a lot of the Twitter accounts that were like, oh, don't trade him, are even now saying trade him. So like, I wouldn't be surprised if there were some hurt feelings. I wouldn't be surprised if there were some Coyotes fans that boo. I just I hope it doesn't happen, and I, I don't really think it will. I don't think so either, because he didn't burn the team, right? It wasn't like this organization sucks, I don't like it here. Uh, I've never liked it here. I want to go to a competitor. Like, he, he didn't come in, like, burning the bridge. He was on it. It was brash, but it was honest, right? It was, I want to go play for a contender. Um, And I was approached by the team about this even before. Remember, it's not like he said, I want out. And the team was like, all right, why do you want out? It was... This was, remember, they asked him when he was showing off these new white jerseys last year, right? Before the season had started. That according to what he said, it was the season prior, right when they began, and the, the team, or Bill Armstrong came to him and said, do you want out, right? And then 
once he made that decision of saying yes, because obviously kind of everybody's gone, all of his friends are gone, right? It's kind of hard to, it's a very emotional thing, but it's true. Like when you're young and you come into a team for the first time, seeing those guys that you began to grow with, like Christian Dvorak, like Connor Garland, like you know, all the young guys that have been traded out of this organization. I wouldn't blame him for feeling a little upset about that. It's just the truth. People are human. And sorry, I'm trying to collect my thoughts here. And, you know, coming forward and saying, yes, I do. At least he's honest about it, right? He could have been, you know, Johnny Gaudreau, John Tavares. He could have been one of these guys. Oh, yeah, I want to stay here. I want to be here forever. And then dip and we get nothing. So at least he's being truthful and he's like, no, I don't see myself on this team in the future. He's being honest about it. I would prefer like you're talking about, keep it private, keep your head down. You don't need to make this public. If the general manager knows that you want out, they're going to try to get you out. And I know it's frustrating that you didn't get traded at the deadline, but we're not trading you for pennies on the dollar. It's not going to happen. Sorry, Ottawa fans. As much as you want to give us your garbage for him, it's not going to happen. But um, we sure ain't getting Shane Pinto now. I mean, we, we weren't getting him to begin with, but we sure as hell ain't getting no Shane Pinto now. <laughs> well, dude, like, I don't know how, like, if you're going to want, if you're Ottawa fans, and you're going to want Jacob Chikrin, you have to give us something. And I'm not stupid. Look at that Ottawa team. Look at that prospect pipeline. They have an embarrassment of riches. Embarrassment of young, really high-end skill. And we've, we've known this for decades, right? I mean, Pierre Dorian's been there for how long? Over a decade? That guy is a mastermind at the draft. He is unreal. At finding value in those drafts. And if you don't know this, go look at his history. He is unreal. And he's done it again. He's restocked the cupboards with great assets. And if you're Ottawa, you got unreal deals all offseason. Unreal deals. Getting the Brink Cat, right? Pulling in like a bunch of players, free agents, things like that. You have finally taken that step forward to at least compete. It's not going to say that they're going to go deep or whatever, but at least compete. If you're in I want to win now mode, you have to give up something. I'm not saying that you have to give up the most prized possession, but you have to give up something. And especially if you want us to take uh, was it Zaitsev, I also want a decent asset in return yeah. for taking the cap dump. That, yeah. All I'm saying, I did have one though, it was on uh, my, my channel hey, wouldn't it make sense if you want to make room for Matthews you know, to trade us chicken? I'm like, yeah, it would if we didn't have $20 million in cap space right now. Yeah. <laughs> if, we, if we didn't have just nothing but cap space. But yeah, I think um, I'll go ahead and just steal O'Nyquist's take on this one. I was watching his video earlier. The Kings make the most sense. And hey, we're not in the division anymore, so honestly, who cares? If I can get uh, one of their top couple prospects, whether it Brant Clark or Turcotte, one of them two. I could see Turcotte because of the concussion problems. They're not trading Brant Clark. I want Brant Clark, but they're not <laughs> trading Brant Clark. Uh, it's not happening. I, 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 if we do, I will tap dance if that's the case. <laughs> I do believe Turcotte, if there is a deal with L.A., Turcotte would be the piece to go. Uh, L.A. fans liked him. He's a good player, but once again, concussion problems, right? That's a big risk for them. So giving up on a player with concussion problems... That's a worthy trade-off. He could be Christopher Kalanos, or he could be Sidney Crosby. I'm not saying as yeah, good yeah, as that, but I'm just Kalanos. saying in the terms. I'm just saying in the term of concussions, right? Kalanos, good player, never realized it because of concussions. Sidney Crosby, amazing player, had concussions, came back from them, no longer a problem, right? So concussions aren't end-all, be-all for a career, but at the same time, they are significant and they are worrisome. So all I know is that, essentially to conclude, because I do want to talk about another topic, and I, I yeah. don't have you know, the freaking notes me anymore. I apologize. Yeah. I threw them in the, in the hall closet. but um, In the ceiling? Are they in the walls? <laughs> they're in the, in the walls somewhere. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Jacob, 
you're never going to watch this, but I, I, I liked watching it here. I know I, I was yeah. one of the more uh, jerky critics, but at the same time, that's my personality. If, if I see a, a good player, I want great out of them. I, I want, you want you want to see everything improve and keep going up, but good player, should have been the captain. Sucks it didn't work out. Now go mm-hmm. out there, all right? Make sure your, your knees are all good. Go out there and uh, get us some extra value for you. Please yep. and thank you. And you can win a Stanley Cup. You can go to Florida, win a Stanley Cup. You can go to anywhere, win a Stanley Cup. I don't care. Get me an extra first, and and we're, we're all on good terms and, here. It's all and remember, all remember, players love to live here. It's all about the optics of how it looks. You know, Chick has what three years left. Mm-hmm. If two years time, all of a sudden we've got Connor Bedard, Logan Cooley, maybe Austin Matthews. Going for a run in three years' time, if he becomes a free agent, there's nothing saying that he doesn't come back. He doesn't go, you know what? I still got my house in Paradise Valley. They're going for a win. They're going to be going into a new building potentially around that time. Maybe a little bit just outside of it. He'd probably play one year in the, the Mullet Arena again. There's not, there, there is a way forward there where he could end up back on the Coyotes. Not saying that it's likely. I'm not saying that one bit. Not one bit. Let's but say I'm, 5%. There's a 5% yeah. chance, and I'm, that's the most. I'm saying fans, do not burn your bridge with this guy. All right? Let him go. Let him get what he wants. And if he wins the cup, there's nothing saying the Coyotes can't look back on the in the future when he's a UFA and re-sign him. And also, there's nothing saying that, unfortunately, like Richie was talking this a couple of years ago, this is way before the podcast, kind of when me and him were first becoming friends, uh, there's also nothing saying that the the multiple knee surgeries won't catch up and he won't be nowhere near the same player he is right now. So it might look back as, wow, there was two more elite years of Jacob Tricker, but they still got phenomenal value because it fell off a cliff after that. So it's sure. like, it's also one of those things where, again, at, based on our my conversation with Richie, that's why my biggest thing was when this contract's up, I don't know if I would extend him regardless. Yeah. And that was just it's, how it was. It in was my a, mind at the very least. I've had that concern for years. I remember uh, I'm going to, I'm going to date myself here back when Craig Morgan had uh, the Natty Hattie podcast on uh, uh, 987 FM, Arizona. Oh my goodness. Arizona sports, 987, uh, his podcast with him, Luke Lipinski and Jamie Eisner. Uh, I remember I went to, this was before the pandemic, I went to a Stanley Cup final and it was just a few of us there watching the uh, the Stanley Cup final together. And I asked Craig, I was like, doesn't uh, Chickard's double knee surgery like worry you at all? Like, I'm just saying, if he's at max value right now, and this was before he had his breakout season, like, wouldn't you kind of be interested at like, moving a guy like this and i remember they kind of recoiled at the question they were like eh, i don't i don't agree with that you know it's just like just the thought you know that that worries me double knee surgery that's not a that's not an insignificant thing you know it is it is a worrisome topic for sure and unfortunately the rest of the nhl is also looking at it like he gets hurt a lot too so Basically, yes. pretty much, if Chikrin gets moved at least a year ago, we're probably looking at a stupid haul. Now it's going to be just a good value, and it's kind of like just brace yourself for that. It's it's going to suck. The, the the trade value has gone down, unfortunately, but it was a good run thinking you were getting uh, Brant Clark, first. Alex Turcotte, and thirteen first, wasn't it? It was it was a phenomenal time in Arizona. Oh, uh, it was kidding. it was a it was a great <laughs> it was a great thought, but that did not happen. Anywho, Although. I, although I will say, he does have the option to increase his value. Go out there and play your best, Chicken, please, and thank you. 